What's up, YouTube? It's Tone. I'm back for another one. And uh, so today, we're going to go over the definitions of a promissory estoppel. <clears throat> excuse me, which is uh, one of the services that I actually offer. And I'm going to run through the benefits of having it and what it puts you in a position to do once you have it in place. Right. So we're going to go to the definition of promissory estoppel. Uh, okay, so we got promissory estoppel is a contract law concept devised to stop entities from going back on promises, even when they are not written down in a in a contract. If a promise is violated, the promissory estoppel enables the promisee to sue the promisor. Uh, the law enables the victim to take action even without a legal document backing up the promise, but you're going to have the document anyway. So you're going to bring that in and show proof of the, of the contract that you have with the individual entities, right? So you're not going to be sending this to just a, a broad, um, agency, right? You're going to be dealing directly with specific agents. So it's going to be your governor, your mayor, uh, Supreme Court justices and things like this, right? So now these are things that I that I have in place <clears throat> And I'll actually run you down a funny a funny story too of something that's about to be taking place that uh, that has to do with one of these actually And so here you see estoppel estoppel is a judicial device in common law Legal systems whereby a court may prevent or stop a person from making assertions or going going back on his or her word uh, the person being sanctioned is <clears throat> whoever you send it to right so that's who's gonna be uh sanctioned by by all this and uh so once you get these sent out it's gonna put you in a position to hold individuals personally liable and so it's not just gonna be that they're liable in the sense of their uh public title or whatever like that they so this is gonna this is gonna apply in public and it's gonna apply in the private. So you're hitting them on both on both sides. Usually they have somewhere to run. There's no way to run when you contact when you contract with them uh, directly. Uh, it, it's gonna be valid in the public because it's gonna be notarized, and it's gonna be valid in the private because you sent it directly to them, right? So there really is no way to hide once you once you send this. So then here in the second part, we're going to get into uh, your constitutional right to contract, right? And so this references the 1778 uh, Constitution for the United States of America, where it references uh, your right to contract. Now, one thing I want to make clear is that none of your contracts ever came from or come from a piece of paper. The paper, because then somebody could just set that shit on fire and where the fuck are your rights then? up in smoke absolutely not these these documents only reference rights that you already have that were given to you by the creator really that fucking simple you know what i'm saying but they would like to have you believe that your rights come from a piece of paper yeah right because then that means that we can set all their books on fire and then and then where and then where are their laws right <laughs> yeah it doesn't really work like that bro absolutely not cut it out so look so here, this references the constitutional right to contract. Another thing when it comes to contracting is that you have the unlimited right to contract, which means you can contract with whoever you want, and these people cannot get in the way. On top of that, they are all public servants. They don't have the liberty to um, dismiss anything that you send them or to disregard any contracts that you, um, that you wish to enter into with them. Now, so when you send them this documentation referencing your constitutional rights, you need to keep in mind that these people all signed oaths uh, to uphold the constitution. So, which is funny too, because when you bring it up to them, they act like they don't know what you're talking about. Oh, really? Well, you definitely had to sign that in order to be uh, working there. So some of these people are working there without even having signed the constitutional oath at all, uh, which is which is not legal. You're not going to be sitting there, um, you know. I wonder how many how how many people like that have actually ruled on people's cases and sent them to jail without even without even having a allegiance to anything here in the uh, America. Crazy. So this clause on the Constitution protecting the obligation of contracts. 
from impairment does not apply to contracts made after the passage of the law affecting them. So that means that uh, that they have that they have the liberty to pick and choose if you're going to try to contract with them um, regarding laws that were passed after the Constitution. Now, when you bring up this fundamental documentation that you're going to be using to set your contracts with, this is all prior to them even having probably been living, I would imagine, for one, and then uh, prior to them um, working working in office. So they have no say on any of this because you're, you're, you're referencing... Uh, some some uh, some of the foundational principles here in uh, America when it when it comes to law just in general so they're not they're not at liberty to pick and choose here and so all the contracts that we're going to be sending them is all referencing our constitutional rights as well so you know they so if if you look at it like a game of chess there's no way for them to go right if I'm going to bring up the Constitution and I'm going to say hey look uh, the Constitution says that I have a right uh, to contract on on limited and uh, protect my property as well and then you're going to put your property all um listed inside of this contract as well so you're going to list your car you're going to list your children you're going to list all your property your house all that that these people are not allowed to tamper with and then you're going to reference this the constitutional right to contract which they all signed to sign the oath to so when you send that to them and tell them hey look you're not going to be pulling me over you're not going to be coming to my house you're not going to be talking to my kids you're not going to be asking me crazy crazy questions right and Unless there was a crime committed, I don't even want to be speaking to you, right? And you're going to put all this in your in your contract, and you're going to send it directly to them, so that way somebody's going to be held liable. So who do you who do you send it to? You send it to the people's bosses. So if you're dealing with the police, uh, mayor, things like that, go right to the governor, go right to the Supreme Court justices, and you're going to contract with these individuals directly because somebody needs to be watching these these uh these little minions. You know what I'm saying? Which is what a public servant is you go ahead and look up the legal definition of public servant and you're going to see minions there so <laughs> so somebody needs to be watching these stupid little devils you know what i mean i can like they can be out here doing whatever they want it doesn't work like that so once you contract with them and you have this already in place then you can deal with them however you want to really because then you're dealing with trespassing criminals and things like that at that point who have already been put on put on notice and really all you have to do is put them on notice whether they want to act like they got it or not that's all, that's all um, up to them if they want to be dealing with mail fraud and things like that. Because look, so once you send this to them, you're going to you're gonna have it all post uh, postmaster certified and all that. So that's another one of your witnesses. Another witness is going to be the uh, notary, which you could have her have her send it as well. I personally take it in though. You know what I mean? And, uh, and everything... <laughs> Everything is clean. I haven't really had any any issues with uh with getting it mailed out and things like that. Sometimes they take it personal whenever you send it to them. That's not your problem. You know what I mean? A lot of these people don't even know law. So, you know, it's beyond me why they why why they act and do what they do, but it is what it is. So moving on. Uh, the right to contract is secured by the constitutional provisions protecting property and liberty. The legislature has nevertheless an undoubted and wide range of power in making future contracts illegal or void. Uh, so anything that was passed, say, after the Constitution or whatever, things like that. But they can't, they can't touch this. So illustrations of specific statutes which are held valid have already been discussed in connection with illegal and void contracts. In the present chapter, we will pass by those already discussed and consider the other forms of statutes about which there has been a greater variance of judicial opinion. So when it comes to codes and statutes that they pass, pretty much all of them, if they're not in line with what this constitution says, then they're uh, null and void. And, and I mean, you have every right to act like they don't even exist because they don't. I mean, really it's on a piece of paper that some guys wrote uh, the night before without even asking you how, you how you felt about that. That's a little freaking ridiculous if you ask me. Because that means that I can do that too, right? Come on, cut it out. So anyway, so what you're gonna do is send these. So what we're gonna do is send these contracts through our notary. Uh, if you really feel like you need to, I I personally don't, but I mean you probably should. Uh, and then, so so that'll be the first document. You're gonna send three of these to them. So the first one is just gonna be a uh, offer to contract. And then the second one is going to be an opportunity to cure 30 days after you send it. You send them the opportunity to cure, assuming that they uh, that they made a mistake and, uh, and misplaced it or forgot to fill it out or whatever. 
The third is going to be a notice of default, which means that they have defaulted into the contract with you by a uh, failure to respond, which they have a duty to respond. So they made a conscious choice not to. So now they're in a contract with you and, and court is closed. Court is mail. It is the mail. And this is all private that, you, that, that you're going to be dealing with, with, uh, with these individuals. Uh, so the mail is your court. So that's your court of record. And all of your green return sheets are going to be what you're going to use if you ever have to uh, place a lien on them and things like that. So if at any point that they violate any of these uh, stipulations that you set in the contract with your public service, which is what they are, if they do happen to violate, violate any of them, then they're going to be liable for your fee schedule, which you will have in place as well. And so what you're going to do is uh, go ahead and mail them um, invoices right through a, through a notary and let them know what their violations were and that, and that you plan on going ahead to make a claim on their public hazard bond. Okay, so it's gonna be through the Office of Risk Management. That's where you're gonna be, that's where you're gonna find their hazard bonds. Um, but you should go ahead and take the liberty of doing anyway, prior to even having any issues. Once you send all this out, go ahead and get copies of all that, accept them for value, stamp them, and uh, and go ahead and make your claims on them. You know, so we don't we don't we don't have to sue them. Uh, we don't have to go through all their motions and ask them if we can sue them to get money and all that. That's not how that shit works. We are the government. You need to know that. So these people work for you, and all of those. All of those little, um, what do you call it? Litigation and all that shit. That shit is for them, right? That's not for us. So when they make violations that are obvious violations, then you could, then you just go ahead and tax them. It isn't about asking them if you could tax them. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. They're the ones that were granted the privilege of this um, limited delegated authority. And they're going to go ahead and violate that. And they're going to have to pay for that. And so you're going to have proof that they were already noticed. And proof of the uh, violations and that's really all that you need you really don't, don't have to do anything else I mean on top of that it only takes like three or four violations so say say you go ahead and do that somebody else does one more time if they have a blanket bond the whole town is out of work they're gonna be in the unemployment office by the end of the, the end of the month if you really want to get crazy with them you know what I mean so you know look at it like a like a game of chess and these people already lost but they convinced you to think that they were the ones that were really running the show beyond me beyond me uh so yeah i mean this thing runs runs real real deep you know i've been i've been studying um studying all this stuff for years and uh you know i've just been mind blown as to how these people have managed to somehow flip the um narrative of all this and i mean if you really think about it this shit is it's just freaking retarded uh to even think that somebody wearing the badge of a public servant is ever gonna try to get disrespectful at all <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> so the shit is you know out of this world out of this world i don't know what planet they do that on but over here that shit can't fly anymore that shit can't happen anymore so you know what i mean it's on us to make the change so and nobody can do this for you this is all stuff that you have to do you know what i mean and uh so if you guys are interested in any of my services, I can go ahead and run through some of the documentation, let you know what the fees are going to be. Um, any any questions that you have, go ahead and send me an email and, uh, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So that's what I got for you for now. I hope you learned something from, you know, this random video and uh, I hope that it that it made sense to you. And if it doesn't make sense to you, then you should probably get, uh, get to studying a lot fast. Because things are changing fast and I mean, you're either going to know what you're doing or you're not. And if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to get, you're just going to have to go with the, go with the crowd. You know, that's not a good look. So that's what I got for you for now. Uh, until we meet again.